Hello everyone, Cole here with some very exciting news today. Uh, if you haven't heard already, the Underworld expansion is set to come to the digital version of the game on March 30th. Direwolf Digital had stated previously that the expansion would be coming in the first quarter of 2023, and I think some of the community was starting to have their doubts. Uh, well, it turns out we shouldn't have doubted them because they are getting it in just in the nick of time here. I could not be more excited. So let's just go ahead and take a look at the expansion and what they're talking about here. So the battle for the woodland goes deeper than ever when Root the Underworld expansion comes to Steam, Google Play, the App Store, and Nintendo Switch on Thursday, March 30th. The fourth expansion to the award-winning digital adaptation of the beloved war game from Leader Games, Root the Underworld expansion, introduces two new factions and two new maps to conquer. Advanced setup rules let you customize the battle ahead. Prove your right to rule with new challenges and achievements that test your tactical mettle. And as always, you can play where and when you want. Purchasing the Underworld expansion on any device unlocks it across all platforms via your Direwolf, Direwolf account. So yeah, lots of uh, really cool stuff coming to Root Digital. I think it's going to be a great time to get into the digital game. And we can just go ahead and take a look at each of the new parts of the expansion. And I'll talk about them a little bit more in detail. So we first have the new factions. We've got their 3D models here. Uh, I like that they gave the moles transition lenses because they're not accustomed to being above the ground. I think that's cute. Uh, the underground duchy. Sway your ministers to lead a righteous expedition to the woodland, bringing order to the unending war and chaos above. Uh, the moles are going to be a great addition to the game. Uh, they are going to be a much needed red faction. Um, and the red factions are factions that have a high reach value. Um, and through the Riverfolk expansion, we only have the Cats and the Eerie from the base game that are red factions. And that meant that for a game in which we selected random factions, to be reach compliant, the Cats had to be in the game. So in any game with random factions, Cats were always in the game. And any game without the Cats felt pretty empty, uninteractive. Birds had a very nice time in that or they'd be racing the woodland alliance or something like that it it wasn't great um cats pretty much need to be in every game but now that's not the case we can have a, a game with moles and birds and it'll still be reach compliant however we also don't need the reach system anymore because advanced setup is coming which i will talk about more in a bit um, i think digital is going to be a great way to try out all different types of mole strategies because there's so much to explore with all their ministers it really makes you want to just get a bunch of mole games in and try different ways of approaching the early game and which ministers will be better for the end game stuff like that um, and i just found that i haven't been able to get enough mole games in uh playing tabletop with my friends as i've wanted and so now that they're coming to digital that's really great the corvid conspiracy Use cunning and trickery to hold the woodland hostage, instigating plots to seize control through terror. Um, I think the Corvids are a great faction to introduce a new player to root with, one of the, uh, the better ones there. They're pretty simple and they're fun, you can be sneaky, uh, and I think that if you have a friend that's maybe been interested in root um, that you, you'd only be able to play with digitally, I think the Corvids would be a nice way to introduce them. Uh, I am curious to see how the digital platform is going to influence their exposure mechanic. Uh, and I'll show this in a bit when we get to talking about the maps. They've released a couple screenshots. But it looks like they have a box next to their faction icon for exposure that will be lit up whenever exposure is possible. So I'm wondering if that makes uh, newer players more conscious of exposure. I wonder if that will make Corvids get exposure attempted on them more frequently than they already do. Uh, We'll see. The Corvids are currently considered to be the weakest faction, which is a bit of a shame, but I am still definitely looking forward to getting many games in with them and exploring what they can do with all of the Exiles and Partisans decks crafted improvements. So now we can talk about the new maps. We have the mountain map here. Let's go ahead and read their little synopsis. Trek across outcroppings, clear blocked routes, and hold the mountain pass to show you are an effective leader. The mountain map is a very cool map because we have these 
areas that are blocked paths. And when these paths become unblocked, they are these orange-ish ones uh, to show that they were previously blocked. There are six of them, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six. The way they work is once during your turn in daylight, you can spend a card if you have a piece in an adjacent clearing to that path. You can spend any card, doesn't need to match the suit of the clearing you're in, to remove that path from the board and score one point for doing so. So there are six extra points floating around uh, from these paths. Uh, that is very good for the cats. Uh, cats don't really need a full hand of cards. Uh, they can just spend suited cards that don't match their keep um, on clearing paths and get a couple extra points is really nice. And then this reddish looking clearing up here is where the pass is held. And so at the end of your evening, if you rule this clearing, you will score an additional point uh, for ruling the pass, which is again great for the cats and it's nice for other factions as well. Uh, so the mountain map is sort of a more dynamic map that has a lot more points introduced into the economy. I'm curious to see how that's going to affect games. I do think this map is very good for the cats. It also has one more building slot than any of the other maps. Um, I don't know what the exact number is, but it has one more than all the other ones. And so that's also good for the cats because the cats need to build. Um, and people have asked if the tower will be optional because, you know, maybe you don't want to play a game with the tower adding that many victory points into the economy. I don't think it will be optional if I had to guess. Um, it is now optional with the landmarks. And of course, you know, it's tabletop. They can't tell you what to do and what not to do. But um, I, I, I don't think it's going to be a toggle. I, I think they're going to try and keep, with introducing advanced setup, I think they're going to try and keep toggles to a minimum since they're already introducing advanced setup and that's a completely new thing. Uh, but I think when they eventually get to adding landmarks, it will be toggleable, is my guess. Uh, we can see up here we have this grayed out exposure icon for the crows. Um, it looks really dim and my guess uh, as to why is because the crows don't have any plots on the map yet uh, for us being the moles player to try and expose, right? So no valid exposure means that we can't uh, see this button as well. When we can expose, it'll probably highlight and maybe make us more conscious of the fact that we have exposure available. We can talk about the mole UI a little bit here. We can see uh, what it looks like. We've got down here, it looks like how many warriors we have in the burrow. You can see we have this little burrow off to the side on the left here. Uh, I'm curious where the burrow is going to slot in on the existing maps, probably just in this same like left side if I had to guess, little pocket for it. And then this looks like tunnels in the supply because we can see we have a tunnel over here where we set up. Uh, and then this looks like how many warriors we have in the supply. And then this, if I had to guess, is probably how many moles we recruit during our birdsong recruiting phase. This is probably going to be cards that we've revealed during our turn to take actions. And this is going to be our ministers, whether that is clicking on it to sway a minister or clicking on it to see which ministers we are already have swayed or which ones can be swayed or all the above. Not really sure, but it's definitely ministers uh, related. And then over here we have our actions. We've got build, we've got recruit, we've got move, battle, and dig. So we can move on to the lake map now. Whisk yourself across the map by traveling on the ferry, meeting new friends and allies along the way. Uh, so the ferry on the lake map is going to start always in this bottom right clearing. And the way the ferry works is you can move from uh, the clearing with the ferry to any other of these coastal clearings provided it's a legal move, of course. Uh, and when you complete that move, you will draw one card. And the ferry can be moved once per turn. Uh, and I think the lake map's really cool because you sort of have these choke points around the lake on, on the side here, on the side here, and on this top clearing that are pretty difficult to traverse without the use of the ferry, right? So it becomes a very positional game, making sure you're ruling important choke points. If you're one of those factions that rules, getting around those choke points, if you're a faction like the Woodland Alliance, I think this map's gonna be really fun to explore. 
Uh, and like the tower, I doubt the ferry is going to be able to be toggled, if I had to guess. Now we can talk about advanced setup. Advanced setup is an optional way to draft and set up factions, bring balance to the woodlands with new setup buffs, and give your playgroup more control over their starting locations and hands. Advanced setup games can be created by players who own six or more factions, and all players can join an online advanced setup game even if they have not yet purchased expansion content. So that is very generous of Direwolf Digital. They're allowing any players to join an advanced setup game, provided that the host owns enough factions for the advanced setup draft to work. Uh, and the reason I say for the draft to work is because the number of factions available in an advanced setup draft are equal to the number of players plus one. So if you're playing a four player game and you only own the base game, you don't have enough factions available to you to hold the draft. Uh, so the way advanced setup works is all players are dealt five cards, and from those five cards they're going to draft a hand of three at the end of the setup phase. That's great in general, but it really helps out the Eerie because it allows them to more reliably set up God of War giving them a bird card for build and a suited card matching the clearing they choose to start in for move. And it's also great for the lizards and moles because they're going to be revealing their cards to take actions and for moles to sway. Uh, the player that is last in the turn order is going to draft their faction first and then set up their faction first before moving on to the next player. And it did mention some setup buffs, so specifically those are cats are going to get three clearings called homeland clearings. A lot, most factions are going to have homelands. Uh, and these clearings have two warriors and one of their starting buildings in each of them. And one of them will also have their keep. And the keep can be placed anywhere. It does not need to be in the corner. I am curious what the model for the keep is going to look like in these clearings since it's sort of just off to the side in the corner normally. Uh, in, the, in the more central clearings, I wonder if it will be like scaled down or something. So I am curious to see what that looks like. Um, and then you do get one cat in each of the other nine clearings, uh, as opposed to leaving the opposite corner without a cat in it as well. And then we also have the lizards, starting with two acolytes. That's a very nice buff and very much needed for the lizards. And the corvids start with a plot and an extra warrior. In addition, no factions are forced to start in the corner. That's going to give us a lot more entanglement early on in the game and less just slowly building up. At the start, it's going to allow us to more easily uh, hamper factions that are more powerful at the start of the game, such as the Moles and the God of War Eerie, right? Because without the more aggressive factions in the game, such as the Rats and the Badgers, which are coming with the Marauder expansion, we're going to need to hit the God of War Eerie and the Moles a little bit earlier since they are some of the stronger factions and being able to start closer to them gives us that uh, ability. There are some factions who have to start on the map edge, like the Eerie do have to start on the map edge, uh, but there's no one that's forced to start in a corner. Uh, and yeah, any player who owns at least six factions being able to start an ad set game is really great. Uh, I think that is going to be really beneficial to the competitive scene of the game and just players in general getting to be able to try out factions before they want to purchase them and then hopefully they will purchase them to support direwolf digital uh, for putting in so much work into this expansion and making it uh, I'm assuming it's going to be really great uh, there'll probably be some bugs to iron out at the beginning of course but they've done a, a good job keeping up with them and uh, listening to the community when we report those bugs and yeah, just a, a really nice job overall. Not every board game has a digital adaptation and very few have digital adaptations as clean and as uh, functional as Root, uh, which is a great achievement considering how uh, difficult I imagine it was to code. Uh, so yeah, I think this is a great time to get into Root Digital if you have been holding out. Um, I think you should give it a whirl uh, for sure. The release date is March 30th. I'm going to be creating Underworld content once it releases, so if you are interested in that, maybe consider subscribing to the channel, and uh, yeah, I'll see you for the next video.